Well, good afternoon. We're continuing on in the book of Jeremiah and we look at chapter 42 today. Remember in chapter 41, Ishmael had come in and slaughtered the governor appointed by the king of Babylon and also slaughtered all the officials and all the other people who were with him, including 80 men who had come up to Jerusalem to offer sacrifices and, and give offerings in the temple of the Lord. And then he fled. And so there was a lot of worry about whether they'd be safe. Chapter 42 addresses that issue. And let's see, because God reveals to them that they will be safe in Judah. The chapter says, chapter 42, the people are assured of safety in Judea. Then all the captains of the forces and Johanan the son of Kareah and Zezaniah the son of Hoshea and all of the people from the least of them even to the greatest came near and said to Jeremiah the prophet let we beseech thee our supplications be accepted before thee and pray for us unto the Lord thy God even for all this remnant for we are left but a few from many as your eyes can see before you that the Lord thy God may show us the way referring wherein we may walk and the thing that we may do. Notice that the people are referring to the God of Abraham as, oh, sorry, the God of Jeremiah as your God and not claiming him as their God. But in the next verses, Jeremiah makes it perfectly clear that his God is also their God. Then Jeremiah the prophet said unto them, I have heard you. Behold, I will pray unto the Lord your God according to your words, and it shall come to pass that whatsoever the Lord shall answer you. I will declare it unto you. I will not hold back from you anything. Then they said to Jeremiah, The Lord be a true and faithful witness between us if we do not even according to all the things which the Lord thy God shall say thee to us. Yes, what will God reveal to Jeremiah? Whether it be good or whether it be evil, we will obey the voice of the Lord our God. So now they're claiming he is our God. To whom we send thee, that you may be well with us. That it may be well with us, it should say. That it may be well with us. So now they've finally recognized that he is their God as well. When we obey the voice of the Lord our God, then Johanan and the army captains and all of the people, both small and great, came to Jeremiah and said, Please pray for us. Please pray for us to the Lord your God. For as you know so well, we are only a tiny remnant left of what was, was before. Beg the Lord your God to show us what to do and where to go. All right, Jeremiah replied to them. I will ask him and I will tell you what he says and I will not hide anything from you. Then they said to Jeremiah, may the curse of God be on us if we refuse to obey whatever he says that we should do. <clears throat> Whether we like it or not, we will obey the Lord our God to whom we send you with our plea. For if we obey him, everything will turn out well for us. They have that revelation. Obedience is better than sacrifice. For if we obey him, everything will turn out well for us. And it came to pass after 10 days that the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. Then he called Johanan the son of Korea. And all the captains and the forces which were with him. And all of the people from the least of them even to the greatest. And said unto them, Thus said the Lord, the God of Israel, unto whom you sent me to present your supplications before him. 
So that's where we start. If you will, if you will still abide in this land, if you will stay here, then I will build you and not pull you down. I'll build you up, not pull you down. And I will plant you and not pluck you up. For I repent me of the evil that I have done unto you. Now God is saying he's repenting. I repent me of the evil that I have done unto you. Be not afraid of the king of Babylon, of whom you are afraid now. Be not afraid of him, says the Lord, for I am, capital I, capital A-M, with you, to save you and to deliver you from his hand. Remember, that's what God said to Moses. Who, when he said, who shall I say that sends you? And, and God replied, I am that I am has sent you. And so here God is saying, I myself am with you. And I will show mercies unto you that he may have mercies upon you to return you to your own land. Notice that God did not answer Jeremiah's request immediately. He had to wait for 10 days for the answer. Sometimes we also have to wait for God to answer us. We must never become impatient and try to run ahead of God because it will always end up in disaster. We have to learn to trust in the Lord's timing. So 10 days later, the Lord gave his reply to Jeremiah. So he called Jonathan and the captains of the forces for all of the people, both small and great, and said to them, you sent me to the Lord, the God of Israel, with your request. And this is his reply. Stay here in this land. If you do, I will bless you. Conditional blessing. Conditional promise from God. If you stay here in this land, then I will bless you. And no harm will come to you. For I am sorry for the punishment that I had to give you. Think about that. God's sorry that he had to punish his nation. And the nation happens to be his wife because Israel is the wife of God. Maybe you have not thought about this before, but God repents, is sorry, when he has to punish us to make us want to turn back to him. Think about that. God is sorry when he has to punish us. Don't fear the king of Babylon anymore, for I am, capital I am, with you to save you and would deliver you from his hand, and I will be merciful to you by making him kind, so that he will not kill you, or make slaves of you, but will let you stay here peacefully in your own land. But if you say, <coughs> so this is the second alternative, but if you say, we will not dwell in this land, neither obey the voice of the Lord your God, saying, no, but we will go into the land of Egypt, where we shall see no war, nor hear the sound of the trumpet, nor have hunger for bread, and there we will dwell. And now therefore hear the word of the Lord, you, the remnant of Judah. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, if you wholly set your face to enter into Egypt and go to sojourn there, then it shall come to pass. The sword which you feared shall overtake you there in the land of Egypt. And the famine whereof you were afraid shall follow closely after you there in Egypt, and there you shall die. So shall it be with all of the men that set their faces to go to Egypt to listen to sojourn there. They shall die by the sword, by famine or by pestilence, and none of them shall return to us, remain or escape from the evil that I will bring upon them. So God gives them two choices. You stay here in the land and I'll bless you. If you go to Egypt, I'll kill you. Take it one or the other. It seems a logical choice, but what happens? For well, thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, as my anger and my fury have been poured out upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so shall my fury be poured forth upon you when you shall enter into Egypt, and you shall be an excreation and a reproach, and you shall see this place, place no more. 
In other words, if you go and leave and head for Egypt, you're not coming back. God makes it clear in this message that if you have not learned from the lessons that you have previously experienced, punishment for disobeying the Lord's instructions, then you will get more punishment and there will be no repentance this time. You will all perish. But if you refuse to obey the Lord and say we will not stay here and insist on going back to Egypt where you think you'll be free from wars and hunger and alarms, then you've got another thing, thing coming. Then this is what the Lord replies. A rem remnant of Judah, the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel says, if you insist on going back to Egypt, the war and famine which you fear will follow you closely behind you and you will perish there. That is the fate that is awaiting every one of you who insists on going to live in Egypt. Yes, you will die from the sword, famine or disease. None of you will escape from the evil that it will bring upon you there. For the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel says, Just as my anger and fury were poured out upon the people of Jerusalem, so it will be poured out on you when you enter Egypt. <coughs> Pardon me. You will be received with disgust and hatred. You will be cursed and reviled, and you shall never see your own land again. The Lord has said concerning you, O you, the remnant of Judah, go you not into Egypt, for certainly that I have admonished you this day. For you dissembled in your hearts when you sent me to the Lord your God, saying, Pray for us unto the Lord our God, and according unto all that the Lord our God shall say, so declare unto us, to us, and we will do it. And now I have this day declared it unto you, but you have not obeyed the voice of the Lord your God, nor anything for, for the which he has sent me to, unto you. Now therefore know certainly that you shall die by the sword, by the famine, and by pestilence in the place wherever you desire, to go and live. For the Lord has said, O remnant of Egypt, do not go, sorry, for the Lord said, O remnant of Judah, do not go back to Egypt. Jeremiah concluded, never forget the warning that I have given to you this day. If you go back to Egypt, it will be at the cost of your own lives. For you were deceitful when you sent me to pray for you and said, just tell us what God says and we will do it. You had no intention of doing it. And today I have told you exactly what God has said, but you will not obey this time either, any more than you did all the other times that I warned you over the last 40 years. Therefore, know for certain that you will die by the <coughs> You will die by the sword, or by famine, or by disease in Egypt. Where you insist on going, and none of you shall return to this land. So God gave them the ultimatum. Stay here and be safe, or go back to Egypt and be killed. Take it or leave it. That are, they are the options. One is blessings, the other is death. And so we end chapter 42. We'll have to wait and see what happens to Jeremiah in chapter 43.